Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. I'd like to talk a little bit with you about the Patterson film and some of the processing involved, which is critical to understanding a film like this. Um, this is a what I call a threshold film. It's It borders on great, if you can correct a few things about it. One of them is its instability. Uh, in other words, the, the camera shake. Uh, the camera person was running and jumping, and the subject was all over the, the screen. If you can bring that to center, where your mind and your eye only have one plane of motion, then you'll see a lot more stuff on it, if you don't do anything else. Another is chromatic aberration, which is a lensing defect, and it can be corrected with filtration. It's labor-intensive, but it can be done, and I have done it. <clears throat> and here's, here's another one that is more technical, more recent. I'll show you. This is what you call predictive frames, uh, artificial intelligence, if you will. When the, when the film goes from 16 frames per second to 60 and it's stabilized, it produces this wonderfully lifelike effect is sort of like the Disney company Pixar what they produce with a cartoon the cartoons are no longer jittery they're lifelike because the AI predicts and fills in up to 60 frames per second maybe even more but the fact of the matter is that it is not scientific. Let's see here. Whenever you have 16 frames per second, you end up with 60. I think it's something like 44, I believe. 44 frames are just simply made up. And that's why it can't be used for research. Because it's unreliable in the first place. The computer's guessing, but it's guessing based upon what dozens of other people have put in it. It makes great eye candy. But it, you can't swear Bigfoot exists based upon these predictive type of programs. I'm going to show you another way that you can. First of all, let's take a look at... Let me get down here. Uh-oh. This one dropped it already. Well, I'll be... I'll see if I can do it right here. There we go. Let me see. I'll I'll make it a little larger. All right, let's just run this one. It looks pretty good, don't it? It's all stabilized and everything. But you're only filming half the event. The other half is between the frames. And it did not get filmed. And it creates what you call flicker. 
It's kind of a jittery. If you go much lower than 16 frames, it'll start looking like if you're familiar with the old Keystone Cops uh, from yesteryear where they are running around in fast motion and they're jittery, they're filmed at 9 frames per second. Let's just, I'll show you right here. Let me just move this up. Let's just watch this right. Let me go to where you can see the feet. That's the best way. Now watch. Let me go up a little more. I'm going to move it one frame. Take a look how much motion is lost between the frames. These are adjacent frames. Look how much the, the leg has moved. That's what you call a jitter or, or flicker. Filmed at slow shutter speeds. And your, your, your mind and your eye have a difficult time with that. Look at that. That's why that AI looks so so smooth because there's 60 frames. But the 44 that it adds to it may not show this muscle right here. You see what I mean? That's why it cannot be considered to be scientific uh, uh, fit for uh, forensic examination. See that muscle? Just take a look. There's a muscle. See it move? See this muscle right here move? You're not going to get that with AI. You're going to miss it completely. So the next thing you ask yourself, how, what is it that I can do to help soften the impact of flicker and jitter and make this film without sacrificing the actual details of the film? And let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. Let me call up this right here. These are two adjacent frames. 001, 002. Now how can I make the film when it runs run smoothly from 001 to 002. Well, let's just take a look. We'll take 002 and cut it. There you go. And we'll paste it. All right, now it's, we're overlaying one over the other. Now, right now it's showing 002. But it's, it's, the, the number is 001, but it's over, over 001. So I'm going to make it transparent. I'm going to go to about a 45 transparency. And then I'm going to line up what, what I want to line up. And I, I, I'm interested in the face. So I'm going to line up the nose on one with the nose on the other. I may have to uh, back off on that transparency, son. All right, 
then I'm going to go all the way transparent. Then I'm going to copy. Then go, wait, first I got to merge. Then copy. All right, there's the image. That's actually 002 right there. Overlaid over 001. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, about a 50% size. So it will be more reasonable. And I hope I'm not boring you, but this is, this is very interesting when you get your final product. Go back to it. Here we go. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go say 10% back to a 90. Merge. Copy. Paste. Fifty percent. All right. Go back. Go down to a eighty. Object, merge, copy. Go fifty percent. Then I'm going to go back down. to a 70. Fifty percent. Do the same thing. Sixty. You get better and better at it and faster and faster. Believe me. I know, just bear with me.
right. Somewhere is my cursor. There we go. We're getting close now. This should do it. All right. Last one. Instead of having one, two, like this is the jump between the two frames, see how much that arm is moving? Take a look at the arm, right arm. We're going to have, what, ten frames between them, the way it's done this way. And it's centered on this shiny nose. So you can actually center it on any body part thereof. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to do it. But let, let's run this at 10. You don't see a jitter. This is what's, what the center is right here. So you can actually run the film in slow motion without the jitter. And I'm going to show you that. Let's see here. Let's do a complete look back slow motion extended version. See how smooth that is? You see how 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 worth it it is to go through that process. And if this has ha also had some some uh, other processing done to each frame uh, that 
highlights the individual surface details. Uh, so you get to where you see quite a bit going on and in slow motion without the jittery or flicker. You could speed it up if you want. Let me see. I've got the full complete walk. Let's see. How about that? That's a tremendous improvement. All right. Let's see here. Here's clip three. You just take a look. Uh, here's back muscles. See the back muscles in the back, all up and down the back, because it's got all those uh, anti-flicker what I call a transition frames in it that your eye can follow that motion in a smooth fashion and this is not predicted or predictive software it is the actual film itself being used and it is a, a fit for analysis Let's see here what else make a great example. Let's see what this one is. That just shows the, the hairstyle. You can see it pretty good. It's got some flowing down here. And, but it's got some that's put up. You can see the sun shining off of it right there. It's a, in other words, it's silky, shiny hair. Uh, each, each hair shaft is round. All right. You can see the, uh, uh, the joint, the shoulder joint, which has a ball and socket, and they call it a brachiation joint. You can see clearly that it's uh, it's moving freely. It's not un under a football pad like people have said. <coughs> Excuse me. This right here has been done that way. Wow. Look at the neck motion. Look at that as that light from the sun reflects onto the leg. Look how it floods the leg. 
it, it almost uh, it looks like a, a, a strong light coming off the leg. See how the sun moves up and down that silky hair? Up on the head? You can see that hair coming down the side, too. Right in there. Okay. I find this stuff out on the net all the time. People taking it, and they removed P Patty sit standing still out here. And then they say, I did this. See, she's standing still. They just go to that frame and erase it, put in, you know, uh, cut and paste uh, the background without her there. And then uh, I did this. I made this. Not so. These are high quality inserts. These are from the Zebra Chrome prints. Well, you're looking at the results of a lot of hard work, and I think you can, from what I showed you, you can tell that to do the whole film that way would be a lot of work. Uh, but it's well worth it, and I did do it. And I can take that that stock footage with all those transition frames in it, and then I can concentrate on whatever part of it I want. That's the little old braid right there. You see the ear? Now this is an example of what I, that process I showed you initially. Take a look at the arm going up and down right here. Now take a look at this arm going up and down. It's much smoother. Look at this knee right here bend. And look at this knee bend. This is tink, 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 tink. And this is ooh, smooth.
All right. There's that ear. I don't know what all there is to know about an ear, but it has kind of a rounded lobe. There's the raw image right there. You can still see it in the raw image. And there's your braid. And there, here it is. There's your braid. I think that's it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I have. Uh, these are not really secrets of mine. It's just something that takes a good while to demonstrate, and not everybody is, is willing to wade through that. And if it is something that you could wade through, it's very good to have that knowledge, uh, foundational knowledge about the film. Shot at a, a slightly less than 16 frames per second. which is the bare minimum that shows any kind of smoothness. You go any below that, you're going to really get some jitter and flicker. And so I have the smoothest versions of this film that is forensically responsible, not the AI crap. Uh, AI is ca eye candy, but it's essentially a cartoon. Uh, 44 frames out of, out, of, out of the 60 is just made up, invented by the computer. But th none of these were. I thank you for your time.